unimportant Bethlehem births the king of the world. Yet for all that, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not spurn them, neither will I abhor them, so as to destroy them utterly and break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. You know that verse? We learn that God will never ultimately reject the people of Israel forever. No. And that's a promise that God gave through Moses to the people of Israel a long time ago. This was to the faithful remnant. God's people had hope that even though they went through the, the exile and with other people of Israel who were not repentant sinners, they went through this. And we learned about this when we were studying the book of Isaiah. And now in Micah we're studying about this. And we learned that they went through the exile. And that's, we're talking about Israel and Judah. And that was not the end of God's people. No. Now the promise, the promise is that the people the people would also be added to from, key, from King David's line. And who would be added? It would be a king, a king that would sit on the throne, and that is King Jesus. This is good news for the Jews and for the Gentiles all around the world. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end, on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. In that day I will raise up the booth of David that is fallen, and repair its breaches, and raise up its ruins, and rebuild it as in the days of old. He shall judge between many peoples, and shall decide for strong nations far away, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more, but they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. The Jewish leaders of long ago from the first century, they were right to be looking for a king who would take up and rule from the line of David and conquer evil. Yes, they were right to do this, but they failed not to think that this kingdom would come from humble means. The people were wanting a powerful king who would rule over them, and they could easily miss the kingdom coming humbly, the same as King David came by humble means of his father Jesse. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. The future king, he would come humbly, the same as David came humbly from his family, lowly, not exalted, no. And where would he come from? Bethlehem, little unimportant Bethlehem. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul, since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Micah, he agrees that the glorious son of David, Jesus, he would come humbly, and he would be born in a town, the town of Bethlehem. And the people's perspective was that Bethlehem was too insignificant to be among the clans of Judah. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler of Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Micah, he foresaw our Messiah Jesus coming humbly from long ago. From you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler of Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. You know, the verse is, is clear that Jesus has always been here, even from eternity past. Jesus is the Word of God. He's the second person of the Trinity. He's always been. Even before he was born as a human being in Bethlehem, then he grew up in Nazareth. And he himself is the real Messiah. 
And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Now let's apply this to our Christian life. The Messiah, he came and entered the world into the little town of Bethlehem. That's proof this little town, it was a lowly town, least among the clans of Judah. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. You know, some people rejected Jesus. One reason was because it was little Bethlehem, little town. Now it is famous and forevermore because it is the birthplace of the Messiah. And that shows, that shows that God exalts the humble. He does. And others who are proud and exalt themselves, God will bring them down. We just were comparing Jesus uh, to David being coming from a humble and lowly family. From the stump of Jesse, there's a verse about that that Jesus is from the stump of Jesse. Well, was this important that he came from humble means that Jesus did? Yes, it is important. Uh, there's a video that I made before that I'd like you to watch again. And, uh, you know, it will help you to understand about this. What's important about Jesse? It will help you to understand. It's called, Are You Prepared to Meet Your Maker? Corn deal. <laughs> 